Hi, in this video I will explain the concept of resolving power of a telescope. Let's look at this beautiful planet. It has some features on it, some white patches, a green ring. Uh, let's say we want to see clearly the craters around the equatorial region and a crater slightly above below that green ring. So resolving power is all about precision to see images which are very close to each other. In that sense it's superior to the term magnification. Let's line up our telescope the principal axis being the white line. Uh, let's line it up on the center line of the planet. On the left we have the objective lens, hopefully of a large diameter. On the right we have an eyepiece lens which can be moved a bit to and fro to get the right focus. Let's take uh, two craters uh, around the center line of the planet and one slightly above as I said. Now the lower crater on that planet will subtend a certain angle at the eye point placed on the principal axis. And the upper crater will subtend a slightly higher angle at the eye point. So let's say the lower crater subtends 2 radians and the upper one 2.1 radians. Now we want to see two separate images of the two craters. Only then we would know that there are two craters. Therefore the telescope should have the ability to do image separation. although from our point of view, those two craters are only 0.1 radians separated from an angular point of view. So that's a kind of precision that we are looking for in a telescope. Therefore, you can see how the resolving power is different from the term magnification. Now, there are two other problems with the rays coming in. So the rays from the first and second crater will undergo diffraction while passing through the circular lens. So we will find dark and bright bands forming and those rings could be slightly separated and uh, we have to handle that. Also, the rays coming in from the two craters will slightly bend while passing through the convex lens. That's refraction. We will get colors which we don't want really and this will confuse the original image. So coming back to the concept of resolving power, R is equal to 1 by delta theta. I mentioned delta because this is the angular separation. So in our example, it is the 0.1 radians that we are talking about. So if delta theta is very small and the telescope can handle a small delta theta, it means it's got a great resolving power. Lower the delta theta, greater the resolving power and better the telescope. We can pay more for it. Now also R is proportional to D, the diameter of the objective lens, because then a large lens will gather more light from those two craters. So Rayleigh's equation is D by 1.2 to lambda and lambda came in to take care of diffraction. Now, how did it take care of diffraction? He said that the equation R is equal to uh, d by 1.2 to lambda holds as long as the interference band, the bright band of crater number 1, let's look at the bottom right image, coincides with the first black band, the dark band, of crater number 2. So you can see that those two rings are just about overlapping, not too much overlap, not too less. So the telescope is able to handle just about that. So that's the resolving power of the telescope. If they are too close to each other or riding on top of each other, and let's look at the next image, then this is not the condition for Rayleigh's equation to hold. So we will find blurred images and uh, we will not see two craters clearly. We'll probably see a kind of elongated image. So in this way, Rayleigh laid down the criterion to define resolving power and taking into account the wavelength and diffraction phenomena. Now sometimes, instead of delta theta, we may have the delta L. Let's say the craters are 5 miles apart, just for argument's sake. So that's a linear length. So in that case, the equation can be derived in terms of delta L and F0, where F0 is the focal length of the objective lens. It's uh, more of trigonometry here, and you can go through it a bit later. I hope this video was useful to you. Thanks and have a great day.